Welcome to Embedded Programming. In episode 5, which is what we're in, this mini-series, we're looking at how to control DC motors using pulse width modulation. In part 1 of episode 5, we use an ESP8266 shield. In part two, this module, we're going to be looking at using an L298N motor controller board. Now, this is a controller board, so it's not tied to any one of the microcontrollers like a shield. And you will see that in this video where I'm going to use two different microcontrollers. I'm going to use the ESP8266, and then I'm going to use an Arduino with the same motor controller board and use that to control two motors. Our objectives are pretty straightforward. Use pulse width modulation to control a motor speed. And also we want to be able to control the motor direction. And that's going to be through an H bridge, which we covered before, but we don't have to worry about the details of that because that's going to be built in, be built in to whichever motor control board or shield we decide to use. And in this particular video, we use a motor control board. So let's take a look at our friend that we're going to be working with today. This is the L29N8 motor control board. Now, the control board is everything based around the L298N chip. If you look closely, you'll see that this is the L298N, and that's this guy, and then there's all this circuitry built around it. Now, notice big and monstrous this thing is with an eat sink. That should give you some indication that there's a good chance that, oh, this thing can get pretty warm. Now, if it's gonna get pretty warm, that means that, oh, you're losing power or energy to warm this up. And it means that oh, if you have this on a mobile platform, like a robot or something, um, some of your energy is gonna be going towards eating up this device, and that's something you definitely do not want. So for that reason, even though I'm gonna show you it because it's one of the boards available for your robotics project, that's why I'm going through these, but keep that in mind, and maybe um, that's one of the reasons at least I am not gonna be using it. But Let's see what it can do before we, you know, judge it too early just by the cover. Like I said, don't judge a book by the cover. So who knows? Now, let's talk about the features. So this board is nice because we have two channels. So it means we can control two motors with the same board. Uh, we can see some other boards that doesn't allow, uh, give you always give you that ability, but this one does. And so we have motor A, and if you look closely, you'll see there's a pin out one and a pin out two because the motor it doesn't matter which way you plug those in if it's not going in the right direction for you just flip them we have motor b on the other side and that's out four um out three and out four then we have our power block and if you notice there are three pins here there's a 12 volts if you look just at the top of that blue um power block you'll see that there's 12 volts on the left hand side ground in the middle, and then five volts. Now the way this operates is your board is gonna be provided with 12 volts through the, or up to 12 volts through um, the left and middle pin, that's your input power. And then if you need to power up your electronics, let's say your microcontroller, you can then put this jumper on, and in this picture, you can see the jumper is on, and that means that how you're gonna have five volts coming out of that middle and using ground and that rightmost pin on your power block. If you don't need to power up your electronics from the same power supply and you have some other power supply, then you don't need to have this jumper in place. Finally, there's the control headers. And these are six pins. If you look at them, the leftmost pin has a jumper on it and that's enable A, you can barely see it. The rightmost pin has a jumper on it too and that's enable B. And of course you can imagine that means enable motor A enable motor B. The four pins in between, notice from left to right, it's N1, N2, N3, and N4. Those are your control pin. Three pins are gonna be used to control each channel or each motor. So enable A and pin N1 and N2 are gonna be used for motor A control and direction. N3, N4, and enable B are gonna be used to control motor B. So how are those control, control pins used? So Basically, if the enable pin is zero or low, it doesn't matter what values the direction pins. So those N1 and N2, those are actually direction pins. But 
it doesn't matter what values those are, the motor is going to be off. If the enable pin is one and your two direction pins are low, then guess what? Even though you enable the motor, it's like the motor is um, brake. You know, you have the brake supply. It's going to be off. It's not going to move at that point because it doesn't know which direction to really turn. If your enable pin is on and you have the direction one, for example, at zero and direction two as one, then the motor is going to move in one direction. Let's call that forward. If you flip those while the enable pin is still on, then your motor is going to turn in the opposite direction, which is backwards. Similar to when you had both direction pin at the same level, which was low, the motor was off. If you have both direction pin at the same level as high, the motor is also going to be off. So notice the times when you can have this motor turning. It's when the enable pin is high and your direction pin are opposite polarity, right? Um, that was the only time you can control the motor, have the motor in motion. Any other time, the motor is off. So how do we control this from an ESP8266, for example? Now, if we take a look at the pinout for the ESP8266 and along the right edge, we see that we start with pin D0, D1, blah, blah, blah. That's labeled on the microcontroller itself. But if we look at their purpose, we have them as GPIO 16, GPIO 5, GPIO 4, which is a pulse width modulator pin, GPIO 0, GPIO 2, and you keep going down. Now, what we would like to do is be able to use a pin that's pulse width modulation to control the motor speed. So how do we do that with a previous control? Well, based on what we see here is that the motor is all on only if the enable pin is on. That's the only time you can really get it on. If the enable pin is zero, it's off. So why don't we choose our direction and then toggle the enable pin appropriately at the speed that we want using pulse width modulation and that is what's going to give us our speed. And so that's how we're going to use it. We're going to use the enable pin as our speed control pin and then the direction pin where we're just going to toggle those appropriate for, for whatever direction we want. With that in mind, we just then need to be able to line up how we connect these different pins. So if we have the enable pin to control motor A, and of course we know motor A needs also direction one and direction two, well, we need the exact same thing for motor B, right? You know, direction pin, one or two, and enable pin. And so we can connect those like this, right? We can say that we have the two direction pin connect to GPIO five and four, and then since we need a pin that's capable of doing pulse width modulation, we can use pin 14 to do that for motor A. Then for motor B, well, we can equally wire up the direction pin again, GPIO 0 and GPIO 2, and then use pin 12 or GPIO 12 rather for its speed and control. And so that's how we're going to wire up um, the ESP8266 to this port. Now, don't worry about those color or those lines. It's just so it is clear and easy for you to understand. Don't expect to see when I wire up my circuit that I'm going to be spending time trying to make sure I use those same colors, okay? Now, what this would look like um, is that we have the following in terms of a circuit diagram. I'm using a 9 volt battery, and I'll talk a little bit more about my power supply later. But um, again, like I said, your up to 12 volts are going to be supplied on the two leftmost pin, the ground and the 12 volts input. So that's going to be powered for your motor. Now, because you have this big power transistor here, you're going to have a voltage drop per motor, I believe, of about 0.7 volts. Anytime you use a transistor, you're going to have some sort of voltage drop, right? Um, the only time that doesn't is not the case is where you use what a MOSFET, like oh, it would be MOSFET mean field effect transistor. So it's a long time since I've been a, a out of, um, I finished my electrical engineering degree, so I can't remember. But anyway, um, and so it's like a diode. If you use a diode, you're going to always have a voltage drop across a diode. And a transistor in a basic way is basically two diodes back to back. But anyway, um, don't need to worry about the electronics right now. Um, too much anyway. And so I have my 9 volts battery there powering up my um, for my motors. And like I said, if since I want to power my um, ESP8266 from 
to see M9 volt power supply, I enable that jumper and now notice how I connect the middle pin from the power block to ground on my breadboard and then the 5 volt rail goes along the top and then I drop it down to the bottom and then I power up my ESP8266. Now in terms of the control signal, it's exactly like I showed previously where we had D5 and D6, which were um, pulse width modulation pin being used to control um, motor A and B respectively. And then the other pins were just wired up that way. Okay. Now I show you the schematic here and of course all these diagrams and the uh, Fritzen um, project is also in the repository. So go check that out if you need to reference it again or just go back in the slides. Um, let's look at the connection. Now I, I'm going to go through the connection and then I'll talk, show you the code and then we'll show the test of the code, right? Um, but at least you know what the circuits are, um, how they should be wired up and against the, the circuit diagrams are there. And in for the code, if you look at the top of the source code, I tell you which um, diagram you should be using or which um, circuit diagram the code applies to. So you should not be lost. There shouldn't be any confusion. So I'm going to use an Arduino. I'm specifically using an Arduino Uno, but it doesn't really matter. You can use Arduino Mega, whatever. Um, it should still, in terms of the connection on the right-hand side, which is what we care about, the digital IOs and the pulse width modulation pin, you should have um, enough, at least from 0 to 13, on most Arduino. Of course, the bigger ones might have a um, few more pins, but those first 13, those first 13 should be there. And so let's see how we're going to connect our control pin this time. And just as before, we're going to have um, our control pins for enabling motor A in um, the direction. And here in the Arduino, it's pretty straightforward and easy, right? You can see pin 10 is a pulse width modulation pin. So we just connect that. And it doesn't matter that pin 9 is pulse width modulator. We're not going to be using pulse width modulator capability on pin 9. But we just connect it that way. And for the B channel or motor B, we again connect it this way. And notice 7 and 6 used for um, direction 1 and 2, respectively. And then 5 is a pulse width modulator pin. That's going to be used for enabling motor um, B. Okay, very, very straightforward and simple. And so if we translate this to our schematic, it looks pretty much the same as what we had before. Um, no different. We just swapped out the ESP86 and put in the Arduino, and then we draw the lines appropriately. Okay, so let's now jump over and take a look at the code. So here I am in my directory for embedded programming, and I'm just listening to show you some of the um, episodes we have already so far. And so we're dealing with episode five. So I CD into episode five directory. And these are the par parts that we have pl planned to cover. These are the different parts we plan to cover. We finished part one. We're now on part two. But today I'm not going to go into part two directory and then start my Visual Studio Code Editor. Instead, I'll start my Visual Studio Code Editor in five. Now, the reason why I want to start it here is because I want to go through the code that we're using today and compare it to where we had before in episode one. Now, episode one, we took like an hour or whatever, and at least I spent an hour plus recording it, and then a good number of hours editing it and blah, blah, blah. So because the code is so similar, I just wanted to make sure that um, you understand that I'm not pulling the wool over your eyes. So in part, this is part one. Here is part two. In part two, we're going to be dealing with the Arduino and the ESP8266. We have our circuits here. And I always give you the Fritzen project and a PNG um, diagram of the circuit, just in case you don't have Fritzen. Okay, so that doesn't change. Two circuits. And so those are for the two different boards we're using. Now let's look at a code. In episode one, in part one, rather, we had this. We had an ESP8266, and we were using it to control the motor. And there, all we needed for each channel was the motor speed, the direction, and then we had to decide on which pin to use. Similarly, if we look at the first board we're dealing with is ESP8266. 
if we look at this, we have the same thing. So what I'll do is I'll select this and select this on my Mac. It's command key. I use to select those two. And then I right click and I say select compare selected. And then let me close this. And what I want to show you is the similarity between the two pieces of code because I literally just copied the code and made the following changes. I copy the code and I change the board that we're using. The objective is still the same. And I put the that little um, table that we had for how to control this board, the uh, motor on this board. And notice I have a link to some references where I got some of this information about how the board should be controlled. But in terms of how we match it up in terms of which pin we're going to be using, um, notice for the um, ESP8266, we're using pin 14, pin 5, 4, and that's going to be, this is going to be our GPIO for pulse width modulation. Then we have 5 and 4 for speed and direction, and then pin 12 for GPIO for channel B and blah, blah, blah. And I just wanted to show you how similar the code is. Here I use the constants and I just, again, basically reuse the exact same code. In the previous board, we only have one direction pin. Here we have two, so pin one and pin two. But other than that, notice most of the rest of the code is exactly the same, and I'll go through where it's different. And so for a first example then, <laughs> if you ignore the actual pin value that you're using, well, we're using this direct pin driver to control pulse width modulation, and we're using two direction direct pin drivers to control our direction, all right? Two direct pin to control our direction. Because we need to have those direct direction pins, you know, in opposite um, polarity, basically one need to be off, the other need to be on in order for the motor to work. Before we start doing any work, that's what we do. Well, I should say make um, pick motor direction or set motor direction, something like that, but that's what it is. And then notice the rest of the code is the same and all we need to do then is to make sure that oh, we start our device, right? And so we add those other two to our setup here, and that's it. So if we scroll back up now, um, and so if we run the code, we should um, see um, that oh, we can control the motor's speed because this is the objective of this example program only to control motor speed but because this motor has this whole thing about if the pins are not set properly sorry if the pins are not set properly for the direction i had to use direction pins in this example whereas in the previous code we did not have to use direction pin all right so that should be hopefully pretty straightforward to show you so the code is really not that different right there it is uh, without the comparison to the previous code, and that's all there is. So let's run the code and see what happens. So here we are, we have this connected, and our first test is going to be example one with the ESP8266. So it doesn't look pretty, but let's get this running. And so we're that little, well, at least I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, and so the way we've written this, it took it takes about 20 seconds to go from the minimum to the maximum. And so we can see our one motor start turning. Remember, we're just controlling speed. We want to ramp it all the way up. And then all we're doing in our very first example is go to the max, then start over. Okay. So that seems to work. All right. So at least we know we can control motor speed. So let's continue with example two. In example two, so let's open ESP8266, example two. And again, for comparison, I will compare it with this one just to show you that it's the same thing and I'm gonna stop comparing it, I swear, but I just wanna show you is the exact same code and we spent a lot of time developing it. So it was no point in me sort of showing you how to rewrite the exact same code. This doesn't change except for the name of the board, and as a matter of fact, instead of showing you with, 
example two for the previous code. Let me just close that up. Let me show you an example what changed between these two examples. We do compare with selected. I'm going to close that. And if we scroll down, we see that our, I'm just because I'm going to be ramping up and down the speed. Well, I have some new variables and I do that extra stuff to ramp up and ramp down the speed. Other than that, nothing much else. And let's run the code and see what happens. Okay, let's do example two. So in example two, now we're gonna do the ramp up, maintain speed, and then ramp down. So we're climbing up, we're getting towards the max, we should start spinning, we're spinning. We're gonna maintain speed um, for about 20 seconds. And then after 20 seconds, we're gonna start ramping back down. And then, so there we go, we're ramping down. So we have full control of the speed. All right, so let's go to example three. Let's now compare, take a look at the code for example three. And we want to compare it with this guy and we want to see what's different. So here we're still doing ramp up and ramp down, but we're going to be changing the direction. So for that, we're going to use the LED pin drive the LED driver for a direction pin. Not as it really matters, but that just makes it easier for us to say able to say toggle, and then we can call toggle on both pins and know that how it's gonna just be flipping back and forth. And that is going to work correctly because we start off with them being in opposite direction. So later on, when we just toggle them, they're always gonna remain in opposite direction. So that's the key. If you don't do this first um, initial setup, then your toggle is going to keep them in sync, rather um, in opposite polarity, okay? So make sure you do that, but here's the code. So you really don't have to worry about it. Just go and look at it and copy it if you like. Okay, so let's run that code and see what it looks like. So let's run example three. So we're gonna go up. Whatever the direction is, we don't know, let's call it forward. And so it's going, turn in that direction. Get to maximum speed, maintain speed. That's very exciting, I know. Then we're going to start coming down. And then once we get to zero, we're going to flip our direction, which by the time down the motor stops spinning already. So we would have flipped direction. And now we're ramping up and we should see this motor start turning in the opposite direction pretty soon. And it is, there we go. We're going backwards and we're going to maintain speed. And then we're going to ramp down, but we notice ramping up and ramp down work. So we notice that we can change direction and that's good. And so let's stop it here. We start decreasing speed and you can see the motor slowing down. And so we will stop it here. Um, reset our board. This is going to take forever. Okay, so let's look at example four now. So in example four, we're going to be using the motor control pin. So let's see that. And so we'll come select this, select this, and then say compare. Select it. We close that. And now we're going to be using the motor driver to control the motors. And if we again look at what's different, well, previously we had to get, you know, GPIOs to control our direction pins. But since we're using the motor driver that comes as part of Formata or the GoBot project rather, we can just say that, oh, these are the pin and set them. Once we have the motor, we can say, well, once we create the motor, we always start off with the speed pin and then we can say that's how we can set a forward pin and a backward pin notice how this is different let me compare this to the previous code to show you what it, how this compares so let's say in part one if we look at the code and we look at example four so there we go um, example four so there and then select this 
and compare selected. And notice, let's scroll down to where the code is important. Notice here, we have to set forward pin and back pin because that's what we have for controlling motor direction this time is the forward pin and back pin. Here, we just had a direction pin. So you can imagine that this motor driver is really clever. If you set only a direction pin, then it knows that oh, that pin, it just has to toggle it on and off. If you set a forward and back pin, then it knows that oh, it should keep those in opposite polarity. So this motor driver comes with everything you need to control the motor. So once you set those, notice we don't have to in our work function, we no longer have to worry about initializing the proper polarity or values on those pin, right? The output, what the output should be. We simply focus now on saying that, oh, um, we need to just initialize this device. That's it. So we initialize the board and then this device. And other than that, I cleaned up just a little bit and basically before I was using a variable D and then I would call D on motor direction. Here I simply test what the current motor direction is and then just say motor direction at forward. If we go backwards, if we're currently forward and if we're backwards, then we should change it forward. So that's all there is to this. And so let's run that and see what we get. So anyway, let's just run this code and see what's going on. This stuff is going to take a while. So we ramp up again, same thing, ramp up, maintain speed, ramp down, change direction, ramp up, maintain speed, ramp down. But the difference is instead of direct pin, we're using the motor control board. Here, we don't see anything. I, I mentioned this before that oh, we um, the battery might be dying, but that's not what's happening here. Actually, when we first started this off, and this has to do maybe a, an assumption on the initial condition, the motor control board what I've noticed is that it doesn't flip the pins directly. And so the first time it actually doesn't turn, but after a while it's going to turn. So the second time here it turns. So that first time I think it makes both pin low or high, whatever it is. And then it just starts off with some condition where it, the, the motor is not able to turn because the direction pins are not set properly. But then after this point, it works correctly. As you can see, it was going wrong this way now. Now notice that oh, the next time it's gonna start going this way. So it actually works correctly. It's just that that first time it's somehow didn't get the toggle in right and uh, the initial condition. But you don't have to worry about it because um, the motor wasn't like was moving or anything. So so it's not you don't have to worry about it. It's just um, some initial condition that we probably have to we should have set so to make sure that oh we have it turned in on the very first go round. But as you can see, it's working just fine. All right, so let's compare those two. And so we do this and compare selected. And we close this off and notice what's really changed. So again, the stuff at the top is just housekeeping. Um, same thing, we create a second motor this time, motor B. We set it speed and direction, pin, um, you know, forward and backward and the code remains the same between the two. The only thing you'll notice that's different here that I did than what we actually coded last week and I went back and changed is that we we're logging quite a bit, but because we have two motors and we write not a log, it's just a lot of mm, text on the screen that doesn't help us anyway because it doesn't tell us what the current speed is because it's moving so quickly. So why print it out if it, we can't even read it? So that's all that I did was comment that out. So okay, let's run this code. So the last um, example here with the ESP8266. And so that's example five. And it's using a motor control driver, um, the motor driver, and now we're gonna control both motors. And uh, similarly, I expect that um, since I'm not printing out anything, remember I comment out that logic because there was just so much printing out that it didn't tell us anything. Like at least from here, we can kind of, kind of see what's going on. So we could sort of know when it's going up and when it's going down. We're not seeing that there. We can hear the song from the motor. We can see this light blinking to tell us that oh, we're flipping. Now that we enable motor B, we're going to see that blue light that was on. That's actually tied to one of the pins. We That's our one of our direction pin. So now you can see things just flip and they want to turn. Um, so there is, this is turning. Um, this is turning. Um, you can 
I mentioned this before, the thing with the battery, it seemed like the battery is getting burnt out pretty quickly. We saw the light just go off, which tells us that our direction changed. This guy should be turning. I have to help it along. We saw that before. Um, I'm planning to use, let me show you. In the next set of tests, I'm going to be using this LiPo battery. So this is a very big battery. Um, it's, it's still going to be, um, this is 9 volts right now. This is going to be 11 volts. I don't know if you can see the mark right there. But um, it's a lot more current uh, than this 9 volt battery can give. And so I'll see if that is going to allow these motors to turn a little bit faster because if these were in like robotics project trying to move something, I can't imagine it really being able to do anything. But at least our thing is working con correctly as you can see this one trying to turn back the other way. Um, anyway, so we know that that's working. So let's move on and get to our Arduino board. So. That's it for the ESP8266. What would the code look like when we switch over to Arduino? So we can do a comparison between the code we write for Arduino and the code we write for the ESP8266. And so if we select, it doesn't matter which one we select first, but let's put the ESP8266 on the left-hand side and the Arduino on the right-hand side. So that should put it this way for us. And so let's close this. And so there's our ESP8266 on the left-hand side. The right-hand side, notice all we're changing is the Arduino. Of course, it's the same board we're using, so it makes sense that all these control um, pins are, for the board at least, is the same. Here's the big first difference. For the ESP8266, we're connecting over TCP IP, the network, that's our control port. For the Arduino, we have that connected to our computer and we're using um, the serial port to connect to it. In my, on, for my computer, this is my serial port. So you will have to change this if you want to default, or you can start your application with the port that you want to use. Because notice what I do is I use the flex package to parse the argument and get the very first argument and use that as our port. So you don't, if you don't want to change the code, just simply call it with the um, you know, run it with that port or whatever is it that you want to use. Okay, so besides that, again, all this is the same. We've seen this before. There's no different except now that we have to use different port numbers. And I went through for Arduino, we start from 10, because that's a pulse width modulation port. Then we use 9 and 8 for our direction for motor A. Then 5 is a pulse width modulation. And then we use 7 and 6 for direction pin 1 and 2. That's it pin difference and of course now instead of creating a new TCP IP adapter we create a, a TCP adapter we create a new adapter only that's the only difference and the rest of the code is on change nothing else needs to change and that's the beauty I, I like with doing go and formatter or even just using formatter really it doesn't matter what the go part in this case but formatter is that you can pretty much reuse most of your code once you take care of the board differences. Um, that's pin and what type of your connection you're making. Other than that, the board pretty much, the rest of the code stays the same. And we'll see that for all of the other um, rest of the code, the Arduino code. So let's run it and see what we get. All right, so now that I have that connected, I can power up and now my Arduino is getting ready. I have already flashed it with Formata. Now let's run the code. All right, so this is the code. I'm in the Arduino directory and let's run it. It's going to connect to the board. And this is the example in which all we want to do is show that how we could control the motor speed. And I want you to notice something. It seems like the Arduino is able to get the motor going much faster earlier than the ESP8266. This is the first time we've used the Arduino to control a motor speed and it's getting faster and faster and but the thing i like is that we had control much sooner so in terms of making a robotics project look at that the arduino is much faster so i have to take a look and see what's the frequency difference and um between what the arduino is doing and what the esp8266 is able to do 
why is it so different that we can get control of the motor speed all right so i'm excited this is the first time i used the arduino look at that as soon as we got started about around 50 or 60 or there we go about okay let's stop this okay so if we look at example two and we can go either way we can either compare example two for of the arduino code with example two of the esp8266 or example two of arduino with example one and it sort of doesn't really matter either way but let's just do it this way and so we can select that first the second then we say compare with selected and by now you can see all we're just doing is ramp up and ramp down the previous one we're just simply controlling speed only now we're going to actually do ramp up and ramp down and as you can see except for the top and here the rest of the code is identical so pretty boring stuff um, let's see what the arduino can do for us with this board let's do example two this is exciting it's a little disappointing though because i like the esp8266 because it's so small <laughs> and again it's so small what should i expect but i would really, really like it to be and, and it has the wi-fi that's the thing to be able to make a remote control car is the wi-fi capability now i can pair an esp8266 for its wi-fi capability and just have it connected over like i square 2 to an arduino and have the arduino do the signal and control under the motor but that seemed like too much electronics i have these two almost computer computer boards on this you know one thing so i'll see i'll figure it out i'll try to figure out why the esp8266 is now now that i see the arduino can do better in terms of controlling the motor and we're using the same board so that's not a variable um i'll see what happened now the other board that i uh, we used in the previous part one i threw that out um i did not like it because the power and stuff that button didn't work and so on and it was really weird and that might have been a part of the problem might have been the arduino the um, esp8266 but part of the problem was that board also. I show you that when I press the power button, it didn't work. Um, other people, I saw their video there, you, the power button was working. So it's just I had a faulty board. All right. So let's run example two. And I should expect the motor should start turning soon. And, and there it is. And then this is our example where we ramp up, maintain speed, and then um, we ramp down. and look at that down and then we should change did we change direction i didn't notice actually i wasn't paying attention oh yeah we're not doing change direction all we're doing is ramping up maintain speed and ramp down okay so let's stop this and i'll reset the board so that doesn't keep going our next example is changing direction so now we're going to actually put the direction pins to usage well, we actually been using them because otherwise that our board wouldn't have been turning. But now we're actually going to toggle them to change the direction. Previously, we just set them one way and that was it. Well, now we can toggle it. And so we do this. And so we're going to change direction. So we have those pins there. And now we're toggling them to change direction. Just as before, the toggle works because we have said this previously pretty boring all right um, let's do example three in example three is where we're going to change direction and we're using direct pin by the way so all these examples up to example three we're using direct pin so it start rolling there about 50 and we're going up in speed maintain speed hold it there Decrease speed should come pretty soon. Yep, we're decreasing speed. And we come to a stop, change direction. We should be going the other way now. And we are going the other way. And we ramp up. And we know this is gonna work, right? It's the same logic, we've seen this before. Okay, so let me stop this. The next example for Arduino, I'm not going to worry about comparing it to anything else because 
you've seen the code already. Everything else is the same. We're going to introduce using the motor driver. And as before, we just set the forward and backwards pin. And we do the same thing of ramping up, change in direction, same thing. Now, example four, we're using the motor control um, driver. And so this should make things, at least it made the code easier. Let's see if it changed how it works. And we, we dis discussed this already. That first time the motor control driver tries to control the direction, it seemed to don't have it correct. So it's going to fail and so not, it's not turning. But then when it flips the direction, it somehow gets it correctly that time. So it toggles it and it's able to keep them in opposite direction. So I think when we start off, we just have the initial wrong condition. It doesn't know which, which way to go, his forward or backward. So we need to tell it. And there we go. Uh, so that's exactly what it is. It's when it starts, it doesn't know whether it should go forward or backward. So both pins are like low or high. And then only when we toggle it, then it knows that, oh, it should toggle the pin. And of course, when we do toggle, we only do in toggle, we only send forward or backwards. And at that point, it knows how to correctly initialize the pin. But the, the initial condition is it doesn't know. And we're slowing down. And same thing, just as before, we're able to get control of the motor. Um, much earlier and you can see we start turning backwards um, again very very early so let's control c this and then reset our board our final example is to run both motors um, having the arduino control both motors on this motor control board and the last and final test is example five where we try to do both motors and let's see, I'm guessing that oh, maybe I don't have to help these guys out. Um, so there you go. Um, initial condition was not correctly set, so it doesn't know if we're going forward or backward. That can easily be done um, by us saying that we want to start off by going forward. I think we can easily just set forward and it'll be fine. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Um, huh. For some reason, it didn't get to connect to the formatter, but that gives us an opportunity to go change the code and let's go to Arduino. That's what we're testing. Five. And our initial condition when we start, before we start doing work, is we'll set our motors to go forward. So we'll say motors, uh, motor A. Let's do motor A. That direction. And let's do forward. And let's do motor B direction backwards, let's say. And we should go update the same in our ESP8266 code so that the example works correctly out of the gate. We don't have to wait until it toggles. So uh, let's do here, paste this, and let's save our code so it's formatted correctly. And uh, then we can close this. Uh, cancel, close this. Uh, when it's saved properly, then there we go. Let's save it. Okay, so I don't know what happened there just now. It couldn't connect, but let's try this again. Um, so now we have the code changed. So I'm going to hold this up because I expect this to work um, the very first time. So it's trying to connect. Yep, yep, there we go. And it's just us setting the proper initial condition. And so this is turning. Well, the other motor is not turning. So um, why is that? There we go. Notice the speed is much higher. Using the same night volt volts. Then this um, come down. Uh, I can help it there once. I don't know what that was about. Maybe I was impatient. I didn't wait long enough. Oh, I can't, I'm holding this off camera. So, okay. So both of them are running now. I don't have to. So this, I believe, can actually drive something because it's much faster. 
and then let's turn backwards and the two should be on their very different frequencies uh, one should be finishing before the other and there we go the other one is turning backward while the other one is still on going or whatever direction it's going and so yeah um, this is definite win for the Arduino using the same board and so I'm very happy with how well the Arduino can control this motor uh, these motors um, being able to start it spinning so quickly until we're going back and forth okay so we can have fun with this all day and I have to hold this so it doesn't go flying out going out the table because it's moving so, it's so fast okay so let's do that and let's stop our code all right so conclusion Arduino on this board board works really really well if I feel this board it's not too hot that it's, I can't touch it it's honestly it's not but it is warm if I feel this shield this um, heat sink um, it's not too hot that I can't touch it, but it is warm. So that means that though I'm actually putting power into warming this up. So for that reason, I would say um, this board is probably not the best, but it's not, it's not too hot. How much power are you using? I don't know. Um, ooh, I shouldn't be doing this. This is a five volts coming out here. I got to keep this um, thing. Um, so other than that, works really, really good. So um, I definitely recommend this board over the previous board that we had. Um, even though I recognize now that maybe using an Arduino with that other board might have been a little bit better, um, just simply for the fact that I think the quality of the board, um, in my case, um, it wasn't working well um, for power off and stuff like that. This board seems to be much better. Um, all right. See you in the next video. And there we're going to use the Cylon board to control some motor. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll use the Cylon from an ESP8266 and from an Arduino and see the difference. Okay, take care. Bye.